The Pacific Business Group on Health, based in San Francisco, represents about three million lives nationwide. I'm sitting with David Lansky. He's president and CEO of the group, and thank you so much for being here, David. Thanks for having me. Lou. Well, tell me first about the group. I mean, you represent some of the largest corporations in America. And public employee programs as well, public and private. You're right, we represent large companies like Intel and Safeway and Wells Fargo, and they all share a concern about the value of the health care they're providing to their employees, and they want to see us help them work to improve the health care system. And what is on the top of their list? in terms of concerns? I think the concept is value. How do we know that we're providing high quality health care at a price people can afford and can continue to afford, afford year after year? And of course, in the last 10, 15 years, it's been very challenging to continue to provide high quality, affordable health care. So we're trying to look at ways of improving that. And the bottom line is really getting the delivery system to be able to deliver reliable, affordable care. Uh, I think the just dealing with the insurance coverage, the insurance plans, hasn't been adequate to really change the system. So now we're spending a lot more time trying to think about how to help the delivery system re-engineer. And California, of course, uh, where you're based, is yeah. one of the largest economies in the U.S. Um, it is. There's been a lot of talk about giving flex more fl flexibility to states. Uh, do you think California needs to have a more flexible system to decide on their own what they want to do with their health plans. Well, you know, it's an interesting paradox for our employers, who most of whom are multi-state national employers. They've often said to us, it's great if you can make California a wonderful place to live and get health care. But frankly, we also have employees in Nevada and Texas and New York and Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be some level of national uniformity mm -hmm. about the quality of health care. I mean, I think an employer wants to say to every employee, I can assure you you're going to get reliably good quality health care wherever you may happen to be based. Mm -hmm. And we're not in a position we can do that now. So we have to balance the need for national reliability and uniformity with the opportunity for states to be innovative and drive the bar higher and higher. So we see the states as laboratories for improvement and innovation, but we want all the states to take advantage of those improvements. So what's going to get us there, David? Well, part of it is the reform law that just passed a year or so ago will be a piece of the puzzle. There are a lot of elements in that law which will allow states and others to change what they do and motivate them to change what they do. So we've heard a lot about accountable care organizations, for example. We think those are, could be good things. Um, the oppor opportunity for reorganizing this fragmented health care system and providing value, but only if they really set a high bar. So how do we encourage the ACOs that want to form to perform at a really high level of cost management and a high level of quality and outcomes and a high level of transparency. So we're using the tools of the reform process, but trying to amplify them with the private sector influence and dollars to make sure they're successful. And insurance exchanges as well? I mean, you're looking It's interesting. At exchanges, closely. you know, I didn't think would be big on our members' agenda because most large employers are not eligible to participate in the exchange. Mm. But it turns out they're very interested in the exchanges as a pathway toward improving value in the marketplace. Again, it's a place where we can raise the bar. We can set high standards for quality, for example, in the exchanges so that the kind of care that is available through the exchange is good care and affordable care. Uh, but it also begins to change the dynamics of the marketplace. Um, we'll have better standards for what benefits are available, what coverage is available, and uh, hopefully the exchange will be something that the employers will find ways to relate to. Are organizations willing to spend in the short term to create a more um, efficient and yeah. um, system in the end? Are they willing to spend the dollars yeah, it's now? It's a great question. I think the short answer is yes. The longer answer is where there's a proven case for value. And the concern is a lot of people come in with what sound like great ideas, yes. saying just give us some money, an additional fee for this, a care management fee for that. And they haven't consistently proven that those really do produce long-term improvements in health or improvements in value. So I think there's a skepticism among large employers that says show me. And if you can show me a really a high probability chance for success, then I am willing to spend more. Seems like it's a very tough job for benefits managers they these have a terrible, days. They're terribly situation they're in because they're under terrible cost pressure and they don't feel like they have tools to succeed. The marketplace just inexorably in asks for more money every year. And so the benefit manager goes to their superiors and asks for more money every year. Mm -hmm. And that's an unusual role in a corporation to be the, the one department not expected to continuously manage and improve costs. Mm -hmm. So they're in a very challenging role. Especially in this economic environment. Yeah. Um, well, you know, one of the things that's challenging about it is the consumer's attitudes about the kind of care they, they expect and the cost they expect to incur. And a lot of the benefits managers want to put in place programs which reward thoughtful decision-making by the employee that says, I'm going to look for a lower cost provider, I'm going to look for a higher quality provider, I'm going to seek out information to manage my own health and find the best services for me. Mm -hmm. 
the employer wants to encourage that with some kind of financial incentives or waiving co-pays in certain cases, but that creates a, an anxiety in the work, workforce that something's being taken away. So the employer, the benefits managers are also in a tough position of not being perceived as the bad guy, of reducing choice, reducing options, when they're trying to encourage people to seek out the best options by giving them some incentives to look at the data and do so. So it's, it's a, getting consumers more engaged is a real challenge for the employers right now. And finally, David, what's the good news? The good news is that there's a tremendous enthusiasm and eagerness on the part of the healthcare system and the employers to try to put some fixes in place. The frustration level has reached the point where people are ready to make meaningful changes. All right, David Lansky, thank you so much. Thanks very a much. Pleasure. I'm Mabel Jong. You're watching continuing coverage of the World Healthcare Congress in Washington, D.C.